Praise God. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to um, our class tonight as we look at lesson number 12. And if I can get back to where I belong on here. Okay. Just give me a moment, everybody. Just give me a moment. I was doing all right until Jackie Carter came down and she's messed my mind up. Okay, so hold on just a moment. Okay. I get blank for everything. <laughs> what can you see on your screen, Jackie? I see you and I see your desktop picture. You see me? Okay, yes, I, I don't see me or anybody else. I see dial-in numbers and that sort of thing. So I'm trying to get that off my screen. I'll be with you. Just bear with me, everybody. Okay. See? Okay, we're we're working, everybody. Just be. Okay, let's come out of that. Okay. Look at your office. Look at your office. Okay, okay, we can go from now, from here. We can go from here. We can go from here. Okay. Dr. Jean, can you see her office, all, all those teddy bears and all that stuff? Ryan, can you hear me? Okay, okay. I can, I can hear you. Okay, good. Can you see Jackie's office, all those teddy bears and stuff? No, I can't. <laughs> all right. Well, praise God. Well, everybody, okay, we're set up now, and uh, we're ready to roll. And I want to thank each and every one of you for being so kind and, and being a part of the school. Uh, you are a blessing to me and to many, many people. You have blessed my heart. And um, I was just sharing in the last couple of days, I've been telling Jackie how excited I am about the school. Jackie, tell the people some of the things I've been saying. Oh, you've just been talking about how blessed um, the, the semester has been and um, just reveling in all those positive comments and especially rejoicing in the blessings that the students have been receiving because of this semester's study, already working on next semester uh, because you're so excited, but how much you enjoy teaching the class and interacting with the students pretty much. That's, that's, <coughs> that summarizes it very well. Okay, praise God. We're ready to roll. Brian, we're ready to roll. And uh, Lisa, we're ready to roll. Terry, Jeep, and uh, we're ready to roll. Uh, and um, Ryan, we're ready to roll. So let's uh, summarize the course tonight. What I'd like to do is to summarize the course and a um, little Bible summary and then summarize the, the Pentateuch and then some instructions for next semester. Next semester will begin on January 8th. So after tonight, you have a. If you have all your work completed, you've got a six. You've got six weeks. You've got a six-week break. And uh, uh, Karen Herzog said, "Hey, she's going to take a course uh, from the online selections during that six week." And she, I, knowing Karen, she can finish a course in the next six weeks to gain uh, her credits. By the way, I want to give a shout out to uh, Andrew Hawkins. Andrew, when he finishes the course this week, he will have his associate's degree. I want to give a shout out to Tina McDaniel. Tina will have her bachelor's degree. Ladies and gentlemen, Tina just earned her associate's degree in, in July, and she's been working hard and doubling up on courses, and she will get, be getting her bachelor's degree after this week. And then Bryce Baggett, Bryce is going to be getting his associate's degree. So I want to congratulate you all and, um, and, and all of our students um, 
All of us will be earning their first three credits towards their, their degree. I'm excited about what you're doing, how God is blessing your lives, and how the Lord is leading all of us. And so we give God the praise. Let's ask um, Dr. Jean Bratton to lead us in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this sacred assembly. Father, we just ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you use our facilitator mightily, Father God, to impart knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to everyone who has logged on and not thought that it was robbed, Father God, to take time out and, Father, learn of you. So as we go forward, let everyone who is on be blessed and bless the household. Facilitator. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Jean Bratton. She's <clears throat> one of our associate uh, instructors, along with Jackie Carter. They will be operating in the chat window, and you can you can depend on them. You can rely on them for good information and, and quality assistance. Uh, in starting our summary, I just want to look at the Bible as a whole and uh, look at the whole... <coughs> the whole picture, and uh, still got a little bit of this flu hanging on, and it's got to leave in the name of Jesus, but I'm feeling much better than I had been before. The Bible is God's written revelation of his will to man. The central theme of the Bible is Jesus Christ. The Bible contains 66 books written over a period of 1,600 years by over 40 authors. The Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew, with some of it written in the Aramaic language. The New Testament was written in Greek. The word testament means covenant or agreement. The Old Testament is the covenant God made with man about his relationship before Christ came. The New Testament is the agreement God made with man about his relationship with the Father after Christ came. So we cannot throw out the Old Testament and, um, and just depend on the New. Some people try to do that, but the whole Bible, the whole, the whole Logos, the whole Bible is God's Word, His revelation to us. In the Old Testament, uh, the first five books, we, we've just completed them. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, which we call the Pentateuch. Starting in January, January 8th, we will be starting in the books of history. I'm going to divide the books of history into two different semesters. The first semester, which will be January through March, will be the books of Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings. And then the semester, then you have another four-week break, five-week break, and we'll start in, in May, from May through July. We'll be looking at the uh, Old Testament books of history, part two, and those will be the books of First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Then we get a break. Uh, during the month of August, we'll start up again next September with the books of poetry, the books of poetry. And we'll be looking at Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. That's from September through November of next year. Okay, after that, we'll be looking at the um, Old Testament uh, books of the prophets. We'll start with the major prophets. Um, from January through March of 2021, and then from May through July of 2021, we look at the, uh, may, the minor prophets. We may divide the minor prophets into two groups. Uh, I don't know yet. Then we go into the um, New Testament, and that's the way we want to roll with that. And by the way, in January, in the semester that begins in January, I'm going to add to the, um, um, I'm sorry, in the, the semester that begins in May, May, June, and July, I'm going to add to that the books 
the hidden, the so-called hidden books of the Bible. I want to do some teachings on the pseudepigrapha and the apocrypha so that you'll have a good grip, a good grasp on the books that a lot of people claim are hidden books. God kept these from us. That's why we're Masons, we're Masonics, or we're the Order of the Eastern Star, or we're this and that. Now, now, God didn't hide anything from you. God gave mm -hmm. revelation through Genesis, through Revelation. And these social groups, these Masonic orders, these people who think they have a higher walk with God because they have access to uh, books like Esdras, 1st and 2nd Esdras, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Maccabees, uh, uh, Bell and the Dragon, etc. They don't have anything on you. Some of the, these books are in the Catholic Bible and in the Greek Bible, but they did not uh, meet approval of the bishops in the canonization of the books of the Bible. The Old Testament bishops, uh, the Old Testament elders kicked them out, those books out. They said, no, we do not believe these are divinely inspired. Now, many of those books have good historical information, but the elders said, no, these are not divinely inspired. And in the Council of Nicaea in 327 AD, the uh, bishops of the church said, no, these are not divinely inspired inspired. And so your Bible, my Bible, consists of 66 books. If you happen to have a Catholic Bible, then you've got about 20 some other books in that Bible. They're good historical books, but they were not approved by uh, the Holy Spirit led Council of the Bishops and the Council of the Elders that approved the 66 books of the Bible. So that's the way we're going to go. I'm excited about what God has lined up for us uh, in, in, the, in the next two years in going through the Bible. Uh, I want to encourage you to tell your friends about what's going on and tell your, tell, tell your pastor, tell your, your uh, uh, friends and relatives so that they can enroll in, in, in the school and be blessed. Let's just summarize Genesis right now. Uh, Genesis means origin, birth, in the beginning, God. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just read the first few words of Genesis and teach others to believe these words, in the beginning, God, that, and if they believe that, that's enough, that's enough. <clears throat> that's enough. They don't have to debate the Bible. They don't have to uh, 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 get into dialogues and, and arguments about the Bible. Just believe in the beginning God because the, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in, in righteousness. And so everything in the Bible is good for us. There should be no debates. Uh, I hear people, well, I kind of differ with this. I don't agree with that. You better agree with it. You better agree with it. Uh, don't contend with God. Believe everything God has put in the Bible because the Bible is divinely inspired. It's inspired means it's breathed. God breathed his breath. The Holy Ghost breathed into 40 different people, and they wrote what thus saith the Lord. So the Bible is not debatable. It is not a subject to be debated. It is not debatable. It, is not, it has no errors. Uh, the Bible is inerrant, meaning you can't find an error in the Bible. Now, you'll find typos, and, and that's not God's fault. That's the fault of the editors, the redactors the people uh, who even translated the uh, original documents from the Hebrew or the Aramaic or the uh, Greek into the Latin and then into the vernacular languages. But God did not make any mistake. Everything between, Je between Genesis and Revelation is good for us. It's like it's better than a good meal. Genesis, as we looked at it, <laughs> we learn about how the, the world was created, and, 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 and people say, well, how did God create it? Well, God shows us in Genesis, in the beginning, God and the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit did all this. And believe it, don't argue with it. 
Um, the beginning of sin, Genesis 3. The beginning of the promise of redemption, Genesis 3.15. The beginning of family life, the beginning of civilization, the beginning of nations. All of this is in Genesis. And then how God chose a certain uh, uh, man to father a race of people, starting with uh, Abraham, Abram in Genesis 12. We find the structure of Genesis, part one, creation, the fall of man, the flood, and the Babel crisis. The second part of Genesis is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, four of the uh, six characters uh, who are mainly included in Genesis, how God chose these people from one family to uh, bring his seed forth, Jesus the Christ, um, to redeem mankind. Genesis is a great book um, and, and talks about the temptation, how Satan got a hold on God's plan and, and how Satan tried to destroy God's seed from, from bringing forth Jesus because Satan was afraid. He, he, he was shaken in his boots when he heard Genesis 3.15 that uh, of the son, the seed of the woman would bruise his head. Satan became shook up, and he tried his best to destroy mankind. He even produced a, a race of giants who uh, married the women on the earth and produced a race of giants, ungodly creatures, uh, and planted them in the promised land that God had promised for Abraham. And that didn't work. Uh, Joshua led the people in, and, and uh, with the help of, of bold people like bold Caleb, 85 years old, uh, Caleb said, uh, Joshua, you remember 45 years ago, we spied out this land, and I saw giants there, and they're still there, and I'm 85 years old now, but I'm still ready for war. Give me this mountain, Caleb said. I'll drive the Anakim out. And in Joshua chapter 14, you'll see that Caleb drove out the sons of Anak. He uh, uh, whooped up, opened up a can of whoop, Gene Bratton. Joshua opened <laughs> up a can of whoop, and they put a hurting on the sons of Anak. And so um, continuing with Genesis, we see the, uh, the direct prophecy of Jesus Christ, Genesis 3.15, and all the things that God's people went through in producing, in, in, in um, carrying the seed from Abraham through Isaac, Isaac through uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob through his sons uh, Joseph, uh, and uh, Joseph through uh, Ephraim, and, and on down the line. We see uh, a great, great um, genealogy and what God had done in preserving his people. All of God's people were not goody goodies. No, no, no. Some had reputations, okay? Um, God even chose a harlot named Rahab, and Rahab was became the great great grand grandmother of, of King David. And so but Rahab got saved. Harlots can be saved. You know, prostitutes can be saved. We see God's grace and mercy all through Scripture. And we see God's grace and mercy today. I'm a living witness of God's grace and mercy. I'm a living witness that we serve a good God. And uh, we look at the life of Joseph <coughs> and how Joseph helped preserve the seed by his faithfulness in Egypt. And it was because of Joseph being planted in Egypt that Jacob and his family were, were able to move into Egypt during a time of famine so that God's people could survive. When we look at the book of Exodus, we see that a pharaoh came into existence who did not remember Joseph. He, uh, he didn't know Joseph, and the Israelites did not have favor with the uh, Egyptian people. The Israelites had grown. They had procreated into millions of people. And so the Egyptians were afraid, and they put the Israelites in bondage. They made slaves of them and enslaved them. And um, 
It's the wonderful story of how God delivered his people out of slavery. He chose a man named Moses. And uh, you see Moses' story in Exodus. Exodus is the book of redemption. And um, Moses is called the deliverer. We see his birth, his call, his announcement uh, to go and to deliver the land. And how, uh, you know, when God uh, gives you a calling, it's not always going to be easy. I want to say to my friends, all of you, uh, God gives you the plan, and he gives you his word, he gives you the vision, but it's not always easy. When God gives you a faith vision, and, and uh, if you can, go back to my YouTube uh, page and, and download my four-part series on what happens with your faith vision. When God gives you a vision, everything isn't going to come out Oh, it's not going to always be easy. You're going to have challenges. You're going to have issues. And but but God is faithful. We could preach a sermon tonight and entitle it "But God." But God is always faithful. When He makes a promise, He will keep that promise. Yes, you're going to have to go through some stuff. The uh, children of Israel went through some stuff in Exodus. We see Moses going through some stuff. I mean, three and a half million, million people, they got on his last nerve quite often. But Moses remained faithful, and God uh, continued to be faithful, and he delivered his people. We see how God keeps his promises throughout Scripture. Uh, we see also how people lose their promise because of sin. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent, but God's not going to give you what he promises if you sin and don't repent. That is why it is so important to repent. Now, I just want to share this because there are some of you on tonight. You're going through stuff. You need to hear this. You're wondering, well, what happened to my vision? I haven't heard from God in a while. And, and it seems like God has stopped, has stopped talking to me. Hey, listen, when God is not speaking to you, he still has his plan. His word will not return until him void or empty. You just be patient. Keep the faith. And, and if you're not hearing from God, worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Spend more time in worship. Spend more time in praise. Spend more time in the word. You know, uh, 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 your season is coming. Your season is coming. God keeps telling me. I keep hearing him. Him. I've heard him over the last couple of weeks. Uh, 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 you're in a new season. I'm doing a new thing in you, and I am excited. Ladies and gentlemen, I am excited, just like a kid in the candy store. I'm excited about what God is doing in this new thing, and I'm excited about what he's doing for you and for the ministry. So we see the exodus where Israel could have gone into the promised land. 11 days after they had come out of Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, they could have gone into the promised land. Actually, 11 days from Mount Sinai. And um, they did not enter into the promised land because of unbelief. Unbelief. I want to say this. You know, the majority is not always correct. I would rather listen to God than the majority. I would rather please God than the please man. The majority has their opinion, and uh, uh, democracy is good, but democracy is not better than God. When God speaks, he reveals his plan. And so when God speaks to you, he tells you what he wants you to do. He shows you what he wants you to do. Uh, 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 lock, lock it down. Lock it down. He told Habakkuk, write the vision. Though the vision tarry, wait for it. When God gives you a vision, and a vision can be a word, or he can give you a scenic view of what he wants to do, write it down, describe it, put it in writing, document it, and, and go back to that writing from time to time um, for, for, uh, for, to strengthen that vision. But don't let people move you off God's plan and purpose. And don't let circumstances move you off God's plan and purpose. We see how Satan moved God's people 
off God's plan, and Satan had them grumbling and complaining, and a whole generation of people were destroyed in the wilderness because of unbelief. Unbelief means they did not believe God. They did not trust God. They did not obey the leader God had appointed over them, Moses. And, and uh, God would not permit them to enter into the promised land. And so you'll see in Exodus that they made a great big circle, ladies and gentlemen. Forty years they made a great big circle in the wilderness. And after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, they wound up at the very same spot where God had spoken to them, and they could have gone into the promised land 11 days later. So um, this is a message for many of us. Uh, pe some people <laughs> have not seen their vision come to fruition because of sin. Others because of doubt and unbelief. Still others because, you know, your pastor doesn't agree with what you're doing or your family doesn't support you or you're being attacked by sickness or, or discouragement. But God is faithful, and I want to encourage you to be encouraged. Uh, be encouraged. Stick with what God has given you. Write that vision down and revisit that vision over and over again as a point of reference and trust God because in God's time, in God's time, in his season, he's going to bless you. I heard somebody say, it's your season to be blessed. It's your season to be blessed. When God, when that cloud, when that cloud lifts up off the tabernacle, Hallelujah. When the glory cloud lifts up off the tabernacle, that means it's time to roll. It's time to move out. And uh, <laughs> some of you right now, you're waiting on God. You're going through stuff. You're going through sickness, going through financial issues, going through problems, challenges. The ministry looks like it's caving in. Stuff just ain't happening. But ladies and gentlemen, one day you're going to wake up and the cloud is going to move. The glory cloud is going to lift up off the tabernacle and, and, and your breakthrough is going to come. And so you trust in the Lord. God is the God of the breakthrough. Okay, by the way, that's a good course if you want an independent study in the, in the School of Ministry. We've got a course, uh, How to Get Your Breakthrough. And so we looked at Exodus, a wonderful, wonderful book. Uh, God gave the commandments to Moses. And God is so, so patient. He's so loving. Moses broke the tablets, and he got angry, broke the tablets because the people were sinning. You know, people are funny. People declare God one day, and the next day they they uh, they're they're uh, uh, worshiping Papa had a sailor man or Howdy Doody. You know, people are fickle, um, but uh, God, in it, in His patience, took Moses back up on the mountain, gave him uh, uh, two new tablets, and 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 and, and the, Moses went back to give the law to the people, and um, so God showed his love for the people, and he continued to show his love, and he continued, continues, continues to show love to us. We see in Exodus the tabernacle, the, the beginning of the tabernacle, the outline for the tabernacle, the place where God would dwell with his people. And the tabernacle is a symbol of the heavenly kingdom. And the tabernacle is also, as we look, um, you can you can get a, a a picture of your own worship life with the Lord, how you enter into his into the gates, and how you cleanse yourself through prayer at, at the altar, and how you offer uh, the incense unto the Lord. That's praise unto God, and and what the candlesticks mean, and and how uh, we can enter into the holy of holies with God because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So this. Summary of the Bible is a great, great uh, uh, um, testimony to God's goodness and his mercy. Leviticus, as we look at Leviticus, the book gets its name from the Levites. It's named after the tribe of Levi, the priests. And it's God's plan for a detailed walk 
worship, and service of God's people. A detailed walk, worship, and service of God's people. In Exodus, God spoke out of the mount where the people were not allowed. In Leviticus, he speaks out of the tabernacle in which he dwells in the midst of his people. And only one person was allowed in that holy of holies. Now, today, ladies and gentlemen, because of Jesus giving his life on the cross and, 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 and shedding his blood and rising from the dead, we now have access to the holy of holies. In fact, God, who lives, reigns, and rules in heaven, he now abides in us. God abides in us. The holy of holies is in our heart of hearts, in our spirit. And so we have a, a God who promised he would never leave us, never forsake us. Troubles come. Uh, 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 storms come. Hard times come, sickness, disease, but God is always faithful, and he will bring us through everything. So you learn how to hold on, learn how to worship God, learn how not to give up, don't go astray, don't sin, um, uh, and if you sin, repent, be quick to repent, so that there is nothing that will separate you and, and me from uh, the love of God. The central theme of Leviticus is fellowship, or uh, the New Testament word is koinonia, koinonia, fellowship, all of us fellows in the same ship. We see in Leviticus the offerings that God uh, required, um, the various offerings and what they meant, what they represented, and so... We get, we get the various feasts, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of First Fruits, the Feast of Pentecost, Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, the Feast of Tabernacles. All these were a uh, part of God's plan for drawing his people into fellowship with him. Then we get to uh, the book of Numbers. Numbers. Uh, Numbers gets its name from the Greek word arithmai. Arithmai, or numeri, the Latin word is numeri, and it's actually, well, English is translated into numbers, and it's all about a census, two, two times God required a census to be taken, one at the beginning uh, when Israel first came out of Egypt, and then another census was taken just before Joshua took the people into the promised land. So there are two numberings of the people. Why a numbering? Because God wanted to prepare a fighting force, a fighting force. And each tribe had um, to, to uh, present their men who were, who were eligible between the ages of 20 and 50. They were the fighters. They were the warriors. And um, each tribe had to provide a number of warriors except for the tribe of Levi. The Levites did not fight. The Levites had the responsibility of taking care of the tabernacle, erecting the tabernacle, taking it down when it was time to travel, and ministering in the tabernacle when the tabernacle was set up. Okay, so um, one note Numbers takes up, the book of Numbers takes up where Exodus leaves off. So in your Bible, you, we've got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Leviticus, the entire book of Leviticus takes up uh, the presentation of the, the, the contents and, and, and teachings in Leviticus take place in a, a period of one month. There's one month between the last verse in Exodus and the first verse in Numbers in Numbers. So look at this. Exodus 40, 17 says, And it came to pass in the first month of the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. Then Numbers 1, 1, which is one month later, says, And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month. 
in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying. And so Leviticus is, is inserted, and the way Moses wrote it, Leviticus is inserted in the month's period of time between the end of Exodus and the beginning of Numbers. Okay, so to give you those references again, Exodus 40, verse 17, and Numbers 1, 1. Okay, the structure of the book of Numbers, it's a book of move, movement by the people. It deals with two different generations. The old generation, chapters 1 through 14, and then the new generation, chapters 21 through 36. You also have a, a, a time of wondering, the wondering transition era, chapters 15 through 20. So in Numbers you have two generations, <coughs> two numberings, two journeyings, two instructions. And the central message is guidance by the Lord God. Guidance by the Lord God. You have in the numberings, chapters 1 through 4, the numbering of the adult males, the distribution of the tribes, the numbering of the Levite males, and the distribution of Levite duties. So Levites were very important. They were so important that they did not have to go to war. They had great responsibilities in the tabernacle and with other responsibilities. Okay, so we see the journeyings in uh, numbers, numbers 10 through chapter 14. And a new journey begins chapter 21 through 25. Okay, by the time of the new journeyings, much of the older generation had died off in the wilderness. You may say, well, that was unfair of God to kill all those people. Millions of people died in the wilderness, ladies and gentlemen. And they died because of unbelief. God is not going to let any unbelievers into his kingdom. And, and, and we've got work to do. Uh, we've got a great commission. Go ye into all the world. And the world begins in our own households. There are millions of people in, uh, in households that we know about. When you combine the totals, you've got millions of people who do not know Jesus. We've got neighbors. We've got friends. We even have enemies who do not know Jesus Christ. And there are still millions in the world, even billions, who have not received Jesus Christ as Lord. What will happen if Jesus comes tonight? They will be lost. They will be lost. And, 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 um, there are people who think that God's going to let them in when they die, but you must be born again. Uh, and we, must, we must tell people to accept Jesus while there's still breath in our bodies. Okay, the, the, which brings us to a summary of Deuteronomy. I've just given you a quick summary of these books because we've spent time in each one. The final book of Moses, the last book of the... Pentateuch. In Genesis, we saw the beginnings. In Exodus, we saw the law. In Leviticus, we saw the worship of the people and communion. In Numbers, we saw the wanderings. So in Deuteronomy, we find final preparation to go into Canaan. I mean, it's, I was just reviewing this information last night and thinking about this. Final preparation before crossing over into the promised land. I mean, doesn't that encourage you? And, and we're sitting where you are, where we are. We're making preparations, ladies and gentlemen, to cross over, to cross over into a greater place, into a greater place. Uh, we're getting ready to cross over into a place where no more lying, no more deception, no more corrupt politics, uh, no more uh, deceit, uh, no more drive-bys, no more disease, no more sickness. Uh, uh, we're getting ready to cross over. And, uh, and can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, when, when the glory cloud lifts and, the, and Jesus cracks the sky and, and, and Jesus stands in the, in the clouds and says, church, come up, church, come up. 
And the Bible says, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who are still alive at that time, we will be caught up with them in the air to be with the Lord forever and ever. And, 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 and uh, as, as, as we get caught up in the rapture, we can say to this earth, fare thee well, fare thee well. Fair, look, if you didn't finish your, you got unfinished business, you, you know, uh, you didn't finish uh, cooking that meal, you didn't finish your shopping, and then the rapture comes, fare thee well. Fare thee well, shopping cart. Fare thee well. We're going to a better place, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and you know, the people of Israel must have been very highly excited when, when uh, Moses gave them the uh, final instructions and pass the torch on to Joshua and Joshua commanded the people okay on tomorrow we're crossing over can you imagine can you imagine just being in that number when Joshua says tomorrow we're going in Woo! tomorrow we're going in and 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 the and uh, uh, even at the Jordan, when when the Jordan the Jordan River was 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 t- was high, it was high tide at the Jordan River. How are we gonna cross over? Oh, just God said tomorrow you're crossing over. And 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 the Bible says when the feet of the priests carrying the ark. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. When the feet of the priests carrying the ark of the covenant, when their feet touch the water. God said, I'll be there. What? How are we going to cross the Jordan? When the feet of the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant touch the water, I'll be there. And ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine? Uh, Joshua said, tomorrow we're going over. Sanctify yourselves. We're going in. And the next day they're all already in the Ark of the Covenant. You've got the tribe of Judah leading the, the march. You've got the, the, the priests carrying, the Levites carrying the Ark of the Covenant, and they walk into the water, and when the feet of the priests touched the water, whoo, two walls of water popped up and a road, a highway through the Jordan. Joshua took them across the Jordan. They crossed the Jordan. Ladies and gentlemen, mm, mm. And you tell me, tell me, tell me. If you can't get excited about the Bible, then you need to go back and, uh, as so I heard someone, you need to get saved. You need to get saved. You just need to get saved. You need to repent. You need to ask Jesus to come into your life. And, 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 and when he comes into your life, then get filled with the Holy Ghost. And then ask the Holy Ghost, teach me what this Bible is saying. Because this Bible uh, um, will make you excited. Excited. Uh, Dr. Jean Bratton, do you get excited when you read the Bible? Yes, I do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to put the seatbelt on, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Praise God. Praise God. And so I lost my place, but we're talking about <clears throat> Deuteronomy. The basic fact of De- Deuteronomy is what the Israelites call the Shema in, in, in Hebrew. Shema Israel. Uh, um, I used to remember that I, we knew this verse in seminary. But that's been a long time ago. Anyway, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thine soul and with all thy might. I bet if Karen is on, Karen, Karen, uh, Karen can. Or I know Karen knows the Shema. Okay, and um, the basic truth is he brought us out from there that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore to our fathers. He brought us out so that he might bring us in. Isn't that something? He brought us out, and he brought you and me out of the mess we were in. Some of us were in some messes. I don't want to go back to where I was. Israel wanted to go back from time to time. They murmured, grumbled, and complained. They wanted to go back to Israel, I mean to Egypt. But nobody wants to go back to the mess we were in. Ladies and gentlemen, mm, mm, I tremble to think of the mess I was in before the Lord Jesus Christ came and saved me. No, 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 a thousand times no. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. 
Okay, so he brought us out that he might bring us in to the place that he swore to our father. And the Lord's going to take us in to the place that he has prepared for us. Uh, he said, told us, it's expedient that I go away, but I will send you the comforter. He will guide you into all truth. And then he also says, in my father's house are many mansions. If, if it were not true, I would, I would not, not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. You and I have a mansion waiting for us. Okay, so mm, it's going to be something. It's going to be something. But in the meantime, we've got work to do here. We've got to study this word. We've got to fast and pray. We've got to stay in the narrow way. We've got to fight the good fight of faith. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to engage in spiritual warfare. We've got to put on the whole armor of God. We've got to fight the good fight of faith because it ain't going to be easy from here in. But it'll be easy if, as we stick with Jesus and don't let anything or anybody separate us from the love of God. I'm preaching on Sunday, part two of uh, Idols in the Church, and already people are amazed from le what we shared on last Sunday about the idols and the idolatry in the church and the idols that are in the lives of God's people. Well, if you think what you've heard last Sunday was something to wait till this coming Sunday, and we're going to take a look, a specific look, at a lot of idols that have plagued Christians and why many Christians are at a standstill. God says, flee idolatry. He wants nothing to uh, take his place in our lives. No person, no, 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 uh, uh, no person, no uh, money, no job, nothing. And so uh, God is serious. He's holy, and he wants us to be holy. And so um, Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy is all about Moses' farewell address as he rehearses the history of God bringing the people out of Egypt and preparing them to take them into the promised land. And literally, the word Deuteronomy means second giving of the law. Second giving of the law. In other words, it's a, a repeat of the, the law that God had spoken to Moses to the people on Mount Sinai. And I'm sorry, that God spoke to the people. God spoke to them once, and then God gave Moses the tablets, and God spoke to them, and, and, and they said, Moses, please, 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 please tell God, if he wants to speak to us anymore, have him say it to you, and then you speak to us, because we're afraid of God. I mean, he's awesome. And so that's how we, uh, that's how preaching came about. God chooses people to speak to people on his behalf. Um, but God spoke directly to Israel at Mount Sinai, and everybody heard God. They saw that mountain shaking and fire spewing up out of the mountain and thunderings and rumblings. And uh, God promised he wouldn't speak to them directly again like that, uh, but he would speak through Moses. And then he told Moses to tell the people, I will raise up a prophet among you who is one of you, one I've chosen, and that was a prophecy of Jesus Christ uh, who would come out of, out of the seed of uh, Abraham. And so um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, we see the creation of man. We see how man is tempted, how man fell into sin, and because of one man's sin, all humankind was in, afflicted with sin. Sin is in the nature of man <clears throat> because of Adam's sin. And we also discover that God promised a redeemer. And God sent his only son, Jesus, the Christ, to die on the cross to pay the price for all mankind's sins. And, and all whoever believes in Jesus and confesses him as Savior and Lord will be saved. The sin nature 
the sin nature is destroyed because of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. So there is a way. There is a way. The scripture says uh, there is a way. There is a road that leads uh, 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 to death. But straight is the road that leads to life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes into the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the door. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, any man will open the door and, and uh, let me in, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. And he will abide in us forever and ever and ever until the rapture comes and he takes us home to be with God. And so God's story of his love for us is awesome. And we're just getting started in this first semester. Uh, I look with excitement when we get into Joshua, and we're going to look at uh, some really bold uh, people, Joshua and Caleb. I mean, that's a dynamic duo, Joshua and Caleb, both of them in their 80s, and they lead the people into the promised land and, and put a whooping on the sons of Anak. And the people possess the land. And then we're going to look at judges and how people like Shamgar, Shamgar. And who in the world would name a, a child Shamgar? But Shamgar uh, was so bad, Shamgar took an ox goad. That was a stick that had a piece of metal on the end that they were used to uh, prick the oxen when they got lazy and refused to walk. Shamgar took an ox gold and slew 600 men. We're going to look at heroes like uh, 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 Deborah. We're going to look at Samson. We're going to look at Jethro. Uh, we're going to look at some heroes. They're called judges. And then uh, we're going to move on to First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. Then we're going to look at Ezra. I mean, Ezra is underrated. He doesn't get much credit. But Ezra is the one who called the people to worship God. Let's, we're, we're, we're brought back out of Babylon. Now it's time to return to God and to worship God. And through Ezra, worship of God was restored. We're going to look at Nehemiah. We're going to look at uh, uh, great people, ordinary people like you and me, who whom God made great because they trusted in the Lord. And so as we study the Bible, uh, not only for those of you who uh, want the edification, you're going to get great knowledge and edification. And I pray that you get all that God has for you. Some of you will take the courses for credit, and uh, we've got a wonderful school for you. Uh, but most of all, develop a love for God and an honor and appreciation and a, 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 a respect for him. Worship God. Worship God. Because God is love. He loves mankind so much that he died on the cross for mankind. And so uh, read your Bible. Pray. Develop uh, your personal relationship with God. Draw nigh unto him. He's not way up there in heaven. He lives inside of us. Visualize God inside of you, believer. Visualize God inside. And he promised never to leave you, never to forsake you. That's good news. That's good news, ladies and gentlemen. That's good news when we're living in a world where people are hating on one another. I don't like you because your skin's a different color than mine. I don't like you because you live in a different neighborhood. I don't like you because you speak a different language. Ladies and gentlemen, there's enough Holy Ghost inside of every one of us that we can take whatever the devil throws against us, and then we can put the devil under our feet. Jesus has given us the authority to over all the power of the enemy. So walk in that authority and walk in love and love one another. Don't take time out to hate. We're just getting started in the Bible. I want to commend you on uh, finishing this first semester. I uh, want to encourage you to uh, take a little break uh, in your formal studies of the Word. But read the Bible. Read the Bible every day. Study, pray, uh, uh, worship God, uh, have fellowship with God every day. We're going to take a break from our formal studies 
until January, the first week of January, actually the second Wednesday in January, January 8th, we'll start up again with the new semester. In the meantime, we're going to congratulate Tina McDaniel, Christina, uh, she's earned her bachelor's degree. Uh, we're going to congratulate Andrew Hawkins, Andrew has earned his associate degree, and Bryce Baggett, uh, Bryce gets his associate's degree. Uh, they had uh, brought their transfer credits from a previous experience, and um, we honor um, honor them by uh, giving them credits through through the school, and they're going to continue towards their next degree. And then I want to thank each and every one of you. I thank you for your phone calls, your email messages, your prayers, your love for Jackie and me. Uh, you all are a blessing to us. I want to thank Dr. Gene Bratton um, for giving us uh, expert counsel and wisdom and, and, and teaching and just being a friend. And um, especially want to thank my wife, Jackie. Uh, she puts off with me. She's a great lady. Takes a whole lot to put up with Leroy Carter. But um, I want to thank you. And um, may God bless <coughs> each and every one of you. While we're on a break uh, for the next several weeks, if you want to call me or email me, uh, please do so. If you want individual counseling as to where to go with your next course or what to do, please feel free to give me a call. Um, if you need prayer, give me a call. Um, I'll have time to, to minister to you. And we thank God. But keep on keeping on. Keep on reading your Bible. Um, Keep on praying, keep on loving one another, walk in love, and keep the devil under your feet. Keep that sucker under your feet. God has given you authority over him. Don't give up your authority. Well, praise God. Father God, we just bless you, praise you, thank you, and honor you for who you are and for what, you, what you've done and what you're doing and what you're going to do. And thank you for your word, Lord God. Thank you for your word. Now, Lord, keep the people. Bless them. Meet every need that they have. Bless every family, every household. Heal those who are sick, Lord. Deliver those who are bound. And we thank you. Bless our nation. Bless our government. Oh, God, create create a, a godly government where godly people will lead and help the people to seek you for godliness, Lord. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. Praise God. Um, I think we will end the recording, but let's chat and chew for a few minutes, okay? And then we'll uh, end the recording and then turn it over to Jackie Carter.